So we're all one big happy family here in Washington, right? Well, <laughs> one Spokane Valley lawmaker would disagree and is suggesting splitting our state into two parts. Western Washington would remain Washington. Eastern Washington would become Liberty under this proposal. Here to help us understand what's going on here, what's behind this, is Seattle University political science professor Marco Lowe. It's good to have you here. Thanks for having this me. This is not the first time this has come up, right? The state has been trying to split almost since it was created. <laughs> 18, uh, 1905 was the first effort wow. to split off and join parts of Oregon and Idaho. Did it ever get up much head of steam? It, it never really has. It comes around and it leaves and it comes back again and here we are again talking about it. Here we are it. again. So what motivates this proposal that keeps happening? I, I think the state is physically different. The Cascade Mountains go right down the side. It's yep. much more agricultural on one side and much more urban on the other. But there's urban sides of Eastern Washington and agricultural sides over here. Yeah. So it's not as easy to say we're two states. Well, and we look at the map there. Mm -hmm. Spokane, for example, has probably more in common with the western part of the state mm -hmm. than with the surrounding area of Eastern Washington. So what are, I mean, has has this ever happened? Have we done sure. this? Sure. Maine broke off from Massachusetts. Okay. Kentucky broke off from, from Virginia, as did obviously West Virginia during right. the Civil War. California legislature voted in 1859 to split the state, but it was never ratified by Congress, so it clearly didn't happen. It didn't happen. So what keeps it coming up in our state? I think there's a dissonance when you live in eastern Washington and you feel, oh, the West outvotes us or the West has all this money and my taxes go to the West. Yes. I think there's a resentment that grows and some people, not all, start to ferment that as a political movement. The, the reality is the West sends much more money to the East than vice versa. But that's not what we commonly think is happening. We don't. You could go to almost any place and even suburban and rural parts of western Washington and they think, I'm paying for Seattle stadiums and things like that. And it's, it's just not the case in almost every state, the urban areas export money to this to the rural areas and that's true for us as yeah. well so do you think this would ever really happen it'd be hard it would first of all just be a logistical mess whose snowplow for Washington <laughs> transportation department belongs right. to what side of the state right. and I think the eastern Washington leaders know as do the western that we really benefit from both sides and it's not just about money it's not just about the mountains as a state when we have different parts of our economy we are stronger in the long run is there a way to to kind of um, get that information out there so that some of these long-term misunderstandings mm -hmm. about where the money comes from and where it's spent might be able to be, you know, I, I think for it, once and for all settled. I think it's worth talking about. I think also we can talk about why does the West maybe generate more income? Are there policies on the Eastern side that they might be able to implement that build business or increase wages? Just as the West can learn from things from the East side as well. So it maybe goes just calming ways. down and talking to each other. Absolutely. <laughs> Which would be good in politics. Um, all together. Now, there have been some previous efforts to split off King County, which mm -hmm. I totally don't understand how sure. that would work. Very what would happen? Very similar discussion. You have more rural areas that feel they're politically outweighed by the urban progressive areas. Snohomish County has had these discussions. Most counties at some time have had this discussion for decades. And again, it is a who's going to get this, who's going to get that, where's the tax base going to come from? None of them have ever happened. And in fact, the state Supreme Court has been very negative on the idea of counties breaking off. Now, what what would happen if somebody did that, if we actually did that, what would happen that we don't expect? I don't think you realize, again, where the taxes are coming from. Yeah. And I think you also don't realize that much of your infrastructure is not paid for by you. So road maintenance that may be coming from Seattle sales tax revenue in rural uh, King County is now having to be generated. And there just isn't the, the retail sales that generate taxes or the jobs that generate right. taxes. And you would it would become very barren very quickly, I think, in some areas. So as a polit political science professor, how do we kind of educate people where this money comes from and where it's spent so that not to say that you can't have your own opinion about that, but at least we'd be dealing with a common set of actual facts. You know, probably the way I'd approach it is not telling them you have to know you're getting money from us, but more, how do we help you feel better about where you live that you don't have this resentment against somebody else that you want to break off? Let, let's see if we can address what, because rural areas are struggling in this state. Some of the poorest parts of Washington State are incredibly rural. Pond Array, Ferry County, places mm -hmm. like that. And I think we can do more to redress what's going on there. Like what? I think we should be talking about business development. I think we should talk about, it's not, let's not just send money for roads. Mm -hmm. Let's see how businesses, what, what are they strengthened? What, what makes them strong? Walla Walla, before the wine industry, did not look like it does today, but they found a strength, exploited it for the best right. sense of the word, and now it's a billion dollar industry in a thriving area. And the state helped that along. Yes. It became apparent that we could do that. Um, so now, what about the Montana legislature mm -hmm. talking about selling the state to Canada? What? what? 
well, no, what is going on? Somebody in Alabama thought it was a good idea to start a <laughs> petition on change.org, which is a sentence every time leads to trouble. Yes. And uh, before I came on, about 17,000 people have signed that for a trillion dollars, we will sell Montana to Canada, who didn't ask to buy it. Right. And we would lose Glacier National Park, skiing, I mean, the, the, the beef, and I mean, I, I, they'd probably try to buy it with Canadian dollars anyway, which isn't <laughs> worth the same. So I, I think it's a bad deal. But the idea was, um, for whoever started it, was that would pay off our our national one debt. One which sadly the, the national debt is more than one is, trillion, yeah, but it would be a down payment. Okay. Um, I don't know if we, we need to do that. I really like Montana. I like Montana I, too. I think we should just stay one big happy family and work it out. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank coming you. in and helping us. We'll be right back.